All right, I wanted to do a real quick video to describe the uh, laser cut tricopter that I got going here. Um, design this all on the computer and have a buddy who has a laser cutter and went and cut it out. It's all made out of uh, eighth of an inch Delrin. Uh, I think it's called acetyl maybe is the formal name. The uh, manufacturer name is just Delrin. So it's uh, 0.125 inches. Up top I have a uh, this battery plate here. So I'm just going to take that off real quick. It's just held on by some nylon standoffs and some long nylon screws. Um, over on the sides, the arms are held on, or the arms are um, half inch square wood dowels. You can get those anywhere, Home Depot or any hardware store. Uh, really common. That's why I picked them. Those are definitely what's going to break in a crash and they uh, also help to limit the vibration going to the frame. Out on the end, we've got the Sunny Sky 980 KV motors running on 4S with 10-inch uh, props. They run real real nice. They don't get hot or anything. These are 1045 carbon props. Pretty big, heavy prop to spin around, but it has plenty of power and, and does really well um, as far as uh, PID tuning and stuff. I was able to crank it up pretty high to get this thing real locked in. Landing gear are uh, just super simple, held together with some nylon standoffs, half inch nylon standoff. Uh, if I have to do this again, I'll probably make the hardware a lot smaller. This is a little overkill, a little heavy for the hardware, but um, again, half inch standoff there. This is just held on with one screw and it's on there. It's on there really good. Um, made it a little bit longer here, just kind of protect the motor from, from hitting things. So that is the... Uh, motor mounts and props um, for ESCs. I'm running 30 amp Simon K flash ESCs from RC Manchild. Um, the motors and the control board I got from Multirotor Superstore. Both these places, RC Manchild and uh, Multirotor Superstore, ship really fast and I haven't had any issues with them. So good to work with if you're looking for parts. Um, run the NAS 32 Acro board uh, I have it hooked up to a USB right now. I didn't, that was kind of an oversight, but I didn't uh, leave enough space here to plug in USB, so you have to plug it in and then leave the cord there uh, while you're tuning. I got a Bluetooth adapter, which I think goes on these two pins, pretty sure, so I will solder that on eventually so that I have Bluetooth control and I can uh, do all the PID tuning from my phone. On the back, I have a leftover from a different copter. I'm going to redo this in plastic, but I didn't yet. Um, just a wooden pivot mount. Servo goes on the side. Pretty much no slop. Uh, runs really nice. Nice, smooth yaw motion for the gimbal, which I noticed on quads it, it gets a little uh, jumpy when in the yaw. We're in the uh, Taro 2D brushless gimbal. And yeah, so how I built this thing, I uh, you just kind of sandwich the plates together, and I made these little things here so these just kind of sit between the plates and you can see one sticking through right there and uh, kind of just kind of put it together put a few screws in going up and it was really easy to build because you have your uh, power distribution up here so I just brought everything right up front super easy to wire everything in and also easy to add stuff if you ever need to so uh, power distribution up here half inch standoffs and the wood provides the support tail comes all the way up through here and you can see it's right there got enough space here for any um, any control um, that I have size for this is the FR sky diversity uh, 2.4 gigahertz receiver and uh, it's also the same size as range link so I can put range link in there if I wanted to uh, the, the wires would probably reach it'd be a little tight I might have to run them straight up or something but uh, over in here I have a um, voltage regulator that I have set up for 12 point or no 11.5 volts I think because the battery wasn't fully charged I didn't really know what to set that at but it works fine so this uh, allows me to have power takeoff right here which goes to the uh, Taro 2D because that runs on 12 volts this is I'm running the copter on 4S get about 10 minutes of flight time with one of these. 3,300 uh, milliamp hour battery. Um, so ten, 10 minutes of flight time, real stable. And then the gimbal is powered by 12 volt uh, coming off of that um, 
coming out of that voltage regulator, which is under this thing here. And you can also you could also run it off a spare battery. If you do that though, you have to run a ground. Uh, you have to run this ground to your ground here, so that you uh, uh, if you want to have control with the gimbal as far as um, putting it on like a pot on your transmitter. So I guess I will plug this thing in real quick and we will watch it wake up and do stuff. Um, controlling it with my Turnigy 9XR. I have my uh, range link up here and when I want to use range link I just pop the FR Sky module out and have a cable that connects so really easy to switch between models. If I want to go to any of these ones that are set up on uh, 2.4 I can and then I can switch right back to one of these over here that uh, this one's set up on on uh, UHF and 1.2 so I can switch back and forth really easy with the with the same transmitter so plug this guy in real quick you can hear the Hobby King buzzer that is on there that is um, just the I forget what it's called. Hobby King, like, I don't know. It's like three bucks. Uh, after you lose a couple quads, you realize that these are pretty awesome. So set, you just set up your fail safe on your transmitter to turn that on. Just have it set up on a switch. And it does SOS, which is kind of funny. And you can't turn it off, and it's obnoxious. But it stops after a second. Um, also, put some LED lights on here. These are set up on a transmitter switch, too. Red in the back for orientation, green up here, and there's a lot longer this one. I broke this arm already once, so uh, I broke the LED strip and just haven't put it back on. These ones are real bright. They're uh, pretty nice. Um, super easy to install, and I just wired them right into their uh, power generation, and I have the transmitter thing in there, the on-off transmitter switch. Um, gimbal comes on, levels up nice, and then I have it set up on a pot on my transmitter so I can change the uh, pitch. I slowed that down a little bit um, just to try to get a little bit more cinematic feel when I look around, but you gotta be a little careful that the wires don't bind up. Other than that, this gimbal was super easy to set up. There wasn't any issue at all. You just pretty much plug and play. Um, I did change the initial pitch angle before I had it set up on uh, the transmitter pot, but super easy to set up uh, and it is extremely stable for um, the price that I, the price point in my opinion. I mean, that thing will stay pretty much right where you want it uh, while you're flying. It produces some really nice video, which I have some of, so I will go ahead and show you some of that right now. So that was just some flight video um, of testing this thing out, getting it ready to go. Uh, okay, so as far as the design goes, um, now it's 32, like I said, all the arms are held on by just two screws and this uh, thing here. You can pull this one out, this one just has a standoff on it. So what you do is when you install the arm, you put that thing in and then you put this with the standoff on and then the arm just wedges in there and then you drill your two holes that hold it in. So no guessing or measuring or anything like that with holes, you just put it in. Same thing with the arms. So all you have to measure is the length of the front arms. And then uh, I haven't quite figured it out yet. I think the back was gonna be about four inches shorter. Uh, or maybe, I can't remember now. But all you do is you measure, or what I do, I don't know if it's right, but I measure from uh, here to here, whatever length of arm I have on, and then make an isosceles triangle and come back here to this one. So. They're all equal distance. 
the angles and stuff on this should pretty much keep your control board at 33% uh, back from the front if this was a if this was a triangle and that's about where I think that most control boards like to sit on tricopters it does a really nice job um, with having the uh, center of gravity where it is it's pretty well balanced and you just use this battery tray and you can move their battery around quite a bit to get it more balanced if uh, if you think you're having issues with uh, one motor running a little bit hotter than the other ones and um, so if you wanted to all you got to do is take out these two screws here and this arm will pivot on here and fold all the way down and I'll probably uh, do that so I can show you what it looks like just pulled off the uh, two screws there and fold the arms down so pretty com compact uh, throw this in a backpack pretty easily it's not going all the way down because there's a little bit of wiring in the way but uh, I think the next design I'm going to take the wires all up and just go right in like up here so that there's no radius to to pull everything apart but um, so the idea for this thing was to use it for skiing and stuff so and it folds up real nice and uh, the landing gear will fold up and then I guess you could probably either take the gimbal off or I'm going to make a little thing to protect the gimbal, but uh, I guess I'll show you how they how the legs fold up here too real quick. Again, just super simple zip tie, pull that out and fold it up. And so you could get this thing pretty small if you needed to, fit it in a Pelican case or anything like that. These legs were kind of an afterthought. I mean, I needed something to get some room for the gimbal, and they are uh, working great. I'm really impressed, actually. And it's kind of cool that if you hit hard, the um, the zip tie will take most of the force. And so a little bit of stretch there, and I've landed pretty hard, and it, it seems to do real well. So there you go.